What's up guys? So today I want to talk about the concept of how if you are born in the United States as of right now you are probably one of the luckiest people ever and I think this is knowledge that should be put out there because a lot of people don't realize this and even if you're not born in the US let's say um, United Kingdom or wherever um, a lot of these places they are just getting better and better every year so as we progress as a nation the later you were born if you were born in 2014 you had it a lot better than those in 1990 those in 2000 those in the 1950s and it's just crazy like basically what's going on here is that um, as Warren Buffett says um, our GDP and GNP are growing at a percentage and that that percentage basically causes more efficiency and better living standards and better you know goods and services to be provided to us and oftentimes at cheaper prices or at better quality and so you can see this with technology and it's just crazy and it, honestly it really makes me somewhat jealous um, that I wasn't born in 2010 rather than 19 the, the 90s um, and it's it's just this, this constant flow so the whole fact that in 50 years if we're still around um, there's this whole thing regarding nuclear war and so forth um, but that probably won't wipe out the entire US and even if it does happen, you know, we can still rebuild and stuff. Hopefully it doesn't hit where I am. Probably would if it happens, but that's that's an issue for another video. And so, you know, regardless though, we are growing at a decent rate, a stable rate. Well, that's, that's subjective, but we're growing at a rate that allows for greater technology. And I, let me give you the best example I can give you. Kids born today are getting stuff that we could not get at prices that we definitely could not get. And those things range from technology, from mobile phones, to internet, to services like cable and Netflix. And um, again, I'm using all these entertainment goods and services that are in certain ways simply a accessory that really doesn't really provide but even let's look at even something integral like gas and electric all these things um, by the nature of capitalism every single year every decade is improving for the consumer so that they're coming at you at either better quality or cheaper prices why because that is the nature of competing businesses to stay ahead, to stay at the top, to stay at number one with its competitors, it has to provide these items to the consumer, the American public or the United Kingdom or uh, whatever country you're from, in a way that the consumer chooses to spend its money on this product rather than this one. And so this constant race for efficiency, similar to natural selection in biology, but different in the fact that in natural selection, there's no real, you know, perfect form that we're evolving towards but regardless the whole idea though is that this constant competition which is good for the business in the fact that they make more money and good for the the consumer because now they're getting stuff that boggles their mind that you couldn't get 20 30 years ago that you probably didn't even hear about and it excites me it makes me jealous as well i'll tell you why it excites me because who knows what the next 10, 20, 50, let alone a hundred, you know, a thousand years will bring if we're still around. The the sheer, like the, the pace of technology and the stuff that's come about in my lifetime, it's just like this. It's It seems to be growing exponentially, rapidly. Like, um, I think when I was born, if you, mention the internet or uh, the iPhone or cell phones or which were called mobile phones back then which actually they didn't really even exist back then 
and all these things they, they didn't happen and then they're just constantly this new stuff pop up then you got google facebook all this crazy stuff on the computer it's blowing up and i i am astounded as to what will happen in the next years and, and again it makes me jealous that i wasn't born later but you know when you've already been given and gifted so much you can't complain and again you know it's it's a crazy thing and it's it's tough to not be jealous but it is how it is and it's it's amazing i don't think people realize what's going on and um i see it in people who are in elementary school now they're getting all this stuff that 10 20 years ago those kids didn't get from the education level to all the technology that ed education has provided there's all these new tools for learning faster, to learning better, making it more fun. Um, then they have all these new forms of entertainment to make their lives more fun in a way. Um, at the same time, uh, some of that fun is a sort of subjective word because you know the you know TV, cable, Netflix, all that stuff, internet, cell phones, texting. Is that really fun, or does that really make you happier? So again. I guess that's one way to convince me not to be jealous but regardless I think it is somewhat true in a way um, but that's again a topic for another day uh, to debate about and so the whole point of this is that um, I find this whole you know system very interesting in a way um, I'm not going to comment on if, it, if I think it's the best system if it's better than communism or whatever but uh, this capitalistic society uh, America, it, it really sort of provides great stuff, and I think um, it it can really lead to great things. Uh, one other quote that Warren Buffett uh, has used is that um, we had a system that worked, and he's talking about America, and he said we weren't smarter than anyone else, we didn't have something that someone else didn't well technically we did um, he didn't say that but he said we weren't smarter than anyone else and we didn't work harder than anyone else we had a system that worked and that just blows my mind because um, I think other nations like China are catching on and they're replicating our system and some of them work harder not all of them um, I think America ha at least American kids have this idea, this perception of the stereotypical Asian uh, to be this super hard worker, super smart in mathematics and so forth. And I joke around with some people. Um, I think I heard this quote from another Asian person I knew uh, in school. And he said, like, he said, all these smart Asians came to America. It's kind of funny. And um, I think it's, it's one way to retort that whole fear that, you know, China's taking over. Um, because there's just dumb Asians, there's dumb Asian Americans, um, and there's probably dumb Asians in China too, and so forth. Uh, you get the whole variety of people, and um, I think, yeah, I think I, I do think that a, a good proportion, a, a great percentage of the smartest Asians from China may immigrate here I, like I see a whole ton like they are coming here to study they're coming here for graduate school uh, some for undergraduate school um, and so uh, that was one of the, uh, the points postulated by uh, this guy called Mark Cuban he's a billionaire and he said like look at the education system until the Chinese stop coming here for education then we can't say that it's it's China's taking over or whatever. Um, but yes, I'm kind of going off topic. But you know, just one last quote for those of you who are interested. Uh, there's this um, there's this uh, speech that Charlie Munger, who's the uh, co-chair with uh, Warren Buffett, he gave a few years ago, and in it he said he spent a good deal of the speech talking about passing the baton and he, he was pretty much like it's time for us to pass our baton Rome did it 
Greece did it, blah, blah, blah. It's time for us. I, I don't know if he said Greece, actually, but uh, he said it's, it's, it's time to pass the baton. So he was pretty much hinting at the fact that maybe, you know, America's getting stale. I don't think that is the case as of yet. There's, there's still so much stuff coming out. I recently attended something, uh, this sort of uh, um, presentation with the CEO of Oculus Rift, um, who recently uh, was acquired by Facebook. Facebook's going to help the company, it's not going to control the company and direct it, which I think is a great move. Um, I've seen some acquisitions such as Disney with Club Penguin, who just after they acquired it, they just took over, they controlled everything, and it ruined the, the game. And um, the Facebook is apparently not doing this with Oculus Rift. If you don't know what Oculus Rift is, it is a virtual headset. You put it over your eyes, you see virtually. Uh, they're still you know, working out the kinks, updating it. Uh, I don't know if it will take off. My thoughts are not anytime soon, um, if ever. But again, those are my opinions. Um, but again, you know, these are those, these, those crazy things that are happening. We don't know what the world's going to provide, but I feel like there's dr dramatic potential out there. We've, we've just hit the tip of the iceberg with the new stuff. Facebook, the internet, Instagram, Twitter. And again, a lot of these things are just accessory entertainment things. But again, there, there have been some crazy stuff that have been helpful. Wikipedia and so forth. Anyhow, long story short. Uh, be very thankful for when you were born and the later you were born uh, don't complain that you're young or that you know uh, you were born so late don't complain that you were born in you wish you were born in the 1950s or so forth you probably don't and um, there's this one thing I want you guys to search it up it is this thing I tried to record it when I was in Disney World but I could not because they don't allow you to but maybe some guy was able to do it on YouTube somewhere uh, there's this there's this ride well it's not really a ride it's sort of like a thing where you just spin around um, and I forgot what it was called but it was it was in Disney World and it, it was called something like uh, it's it's a great big wonderful tomorrow or something like that and basically there's, there's this song that was playing throughout this ride and it, it went something like that. It was like, it's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow, something like that. And obviously it was a ride in Tomorrowland uh, in Disney World. I think it was Epcot. And it really just, sh it just shook me because it demonstrated how freaking much happens in such a short time. And I, I don't... Unfortunately, this no like the small percentage of people who who will get to this point in this video and are still listening and still understand it is it's probably so small. But even reaching you guys, I think if you understand my message, um, I think you'll be very much more thankful on a daily basis. And basically, what it is is that on this ride, basically it showed like four different time frames. I think they were like 10 to 20 years apart. Uh, in America, it was like the, it started at the 19 like 40s or 50s, and then the last time frame was sometime in the future, uh, which was somewhat far fetched, but at the same time not that far fetched. It was crazy because all the stuff was like literally like like feasible. Like they even had like a virtual reality headset like Oculus Rift, which was recently acquired by Facebook. Anyhow, uh, the first three or four time frames which range from like the 1950s to like the 1980s um, it was astounding because like every decade the, like the changes were crazy it went from it went from um, this guy who didn't have electricity to now like a, a stage where they had electricity but it went out like every week and the guy and the, the father of the household had to go to the back and fix it every time. And you see all these little things that you just take for granted now, but they all had, they had to do from laundry and um, the lack of technology, just like 50 years ago, like um, you, you literally see the skit go by where they, you know, they act out what happens in that decade. And it's like these 
teenagers had nothing to do. There was no computers and stuff. Uh, the telephone was this like w one thing on the wall, um, this brand new thing that only the, the parents could touch and stuff. And the teenagers, they, did, they didn't really do crap. Like literally they like played ball outside. Like, and it, it's just crazy. Like, I don't think I would have been like the way I am without technology. I wouldn't know as much as I did. I know like a small percentage of what I knew now. Um, I wouldn't be talking about this stuff. I wouldn't know about this stuff. I wouldn't be as thankful and so forth um, without technology. It's, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. And I really want you guys to see that skit if it's out on YouTube, if some guy smuggled it out. I'm sure someone did. Um, you're not allowed to really film, but I don't know, maybe someone was able to. And it was, it was just crazy. Like laundry back in the day, like they didn't have laundry machines. And there's all these other little things like uh, dresses where it took a long time to, you know, sew and stuff. And um, these things, these little things, it's just, it's just crazy how every decade all these things got changed. And I mean, there's so many things that I can't think of at the moment, but like, for instance, automobiles, like that was a new thing that they didn't really have and they had to walk around or use carriages and horses. And I mean, that's in the last hundred years of our existence in a human civilization that has, that has spanned the last 10,000, 20,000 years. I'm talking every nation as a whole, the human species. And so as long as we don't kill ourselves or consume ourselves or destroy ourselves by, you know, whoops, using up the natural resources of the world before we get to a stage where we can, um, you know, travel to stars or become self-sustainable, the potential is crazy. And, you know, through science fiction, a lot of that postulation has already been sort of uh, expressed. And I think some of, some, some of the TV shows may have hit the nail on the head, Star Trek maybe, but we don't know. And that's crazy. And it really makes you wonder, but at the same time, you know, in this lifetime, I'll probably never know. Um, there, there's a lot of theories. Like, uh, I think there's this one guy on a uh, YouTube channel uh, called Big Think. It's a huge YouTube channel, has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. He pretty much said that, he pretty much said that he thinks that there's probably, possibly, it's like a trial and error, much, very similar to natural selection in our micro world, but this time on a macro galaxy and universe scale, where there are planets like ours who are trying to get to that next stage and there are those who have failed and those who have succeeded the succeeded are those who have survived the survival of the fittest and the ones who have failed all you see is like the remnants of their 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 earth their world their planet and it's it's just like this polluted atmosphere where they tried to achieve the technology to become self-sustainable before they ran out of resources and they failed. And it's that's that whole thing of um, survival of the fittest in a way where you need a Goldilocks planet that's just right, not too hot, not too cold to produce life. And then from there that life has to grow to its point with ascension species. Or supposedly, that may be just something that just may be a postulation or it may just be random like maybe there is no purpose and these planets are just simply floating there and the, the person who created all this if there is a person who did had was indifferent of whether or not someone made it or didn't and it wasn't his intention at all to single them out or uh, create some sort of survival of the fittest uh, to where a species was able to get to that level. Anyhow, uh, again, I've gone off topic, but that's all I really want to say. As always, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments, feedback below if you want.